When God of War was released in March 2005 for the PS2, people had interest in speedrunning the game almost immediately. Only a week after the game came out, a thread would be created on the speedrun-focused website Speed Demos Archive. Multiple users on the forum showed interest in creating a full segmented speedrun of the game. God of War, however, posed a severe challenge to anyone wanting to speedrun it. The game can be extremely challenging, and tactics for getting through the game easier were not exactly developed. Starting right from the game's inception in 2005, a small handful of players took on the challenge of speedrunning this brutal game. Runs would be performed that showcased impressive strategies, glitches, and shortcuts that beat the game faster than ever before. In the early years of God of War speedrunning, one run stood out. That came from a player that stood out. A person who had such a profound impact on the way the game would be played for many years to come. Welcome to episode 3 of this series. Today, we're gonna take a look at the man who broke God of War in half. But first, a word from our sponsor. Oh man, how'd I end up in this rotten sewer? This place stinks. Hey Slim, why don't you just change your location? Easy for you to say. I'm stuck down here. Well, it's easy. Just use NordVPN. With NordVPN, you can change your location to anywhere you want. This is useful if specific songs, movies, or other things only show in certain countries. This is really helpful for my own research, but also for personal enjoyment since sometimes underground songs don't always like showing up on YouTube for me. If you're interested in the service and want to show support to the channel, you can use the link that's on screen right now or in the description to begin your two-year plan. Start using NordVPN today by heading on over to nordvpn.com slash therixer. If you're unhappy with your purchase, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee that has you covered. Again, that's nordvpn.com slash therixer. To fill the gaps if you haven't played the original God of War, or if it's been a while, allow me to briefly show you the game's level order, so you're up to speed. Kratos' goal is to acquire Pandora's Box, an artifact that allegedly has the power to slay a god, which he plans to use against Ares, the god of war. To acquire Pandora's Box, Kratos has a long journey ahead of him. You start in the Aegean Sea, where you take down the Big Hydra. You then make your way through the city of Athens, and arrive at the Temple of the Oracle. You then traverse the Athens sewers, and enter the Desert of Lost Souls, where you find Kronos the Titan, who has Pandora's Temple fixated on his back. The majority of the game takes place inside of the temple, and within it, Kratos is faced with three trap-filled gauntlets, Challenge of Atlas, Challenge of Poseidon, and Challenge of Hades. Once cleared, you proceed to the Cliffs of Madness. At the end of the cliffs, you get to the Architect's Tomb and acquire Pandora's Box. Ares, the god of war, then lunges a pillar all the way from Athens to the temple, impaling Kratos, sending him to the underworld. You then fight your way through Hades and climb the giant rope at the end, so you can literally climb your way out of hell. You arrive at the ruined temple of the Oracle, and finally face off against Ares. Upon his defeat, you sit on the throne as the new god of war, and that's the game. Now, I made that all sound fairly quick, but God of War can be a pretty long game due to its difficulty and large areas you have to traverse. The first person who decided to record their speedrun of God of War would be Prism, who got a segmented time of 2.49.51, using the in-game timer and playing on God Mode, the game's hardest difficulty. Prism released his run on October 1st, 2005, only half a year after the game came out. His run was a decent showing for the time, although it was more or less a speedy casual playthrough with no notable skips or shortcuts. Regardless, not bad, considering the game was in its infancy. Another runner by the name of Ball of Snow would do his own segmented speedrun in 2006, and improve on Prism's time with a 2.16.23. Ball of Snow also played the game on God Mode, and completed his run in 20 segments as opposed to Prism 17. Ball of Snow's time save came from cleaning up most of the sloppiness of Prism's run, and also through a sequence break in Challenge of Hades that saved around 6 minutes. The run got a lot of positive feedback, and was generally viewed in high regard. The run still persists on Speed Demo's archive and archive.org, where someone was so impressed by the run, they decided to give it a review and a 5 star rating. The reviewer's name was God Mode God and was a God of War player who mainly focused on challenge runs and no upgrade runs. He was rather impressed with Ball of Snow's speedy tactics, and how the various fights in the game were handled expertly. 
Entering the year 2007, God Mode God would create a speedrun focused thread over at GameSpot on a forum called the Ultimate God of War Union, where players would share their accomplishments and tactics for God of War 1 and 2. God Mode God was sort of the figurehead of the scene at the time. Going under the name The Creeper on the forums, he was one of the main people establishing proper rule sets, listing times, posting strategies, and welcoming newcomers. The forum was rather small, and didn't contain many members, but the community was tight-knit, with a shared interest for a classic PS2 franchise. But one night, a new user joined the forum, and he went by Setvara. The entry post from this new user went as follows. Speedruns, it's good I found this board. I've done some speedrunning myself. I started playing God of War 1 two or three months ago, and after I had unlocked everything, I decided to personally challenge myself to a time attack. I played under new game slash hero settings and reached the final save in... 12141. It wasn't perfect or anything, and I probably should have spent more time with it. Additionally, some of the videos linked here had some intriguing and useful strategies I didn't use. Nevertheless, I'm still satisfied with my time overall. Yeah. Who wouldn't be with a time like that? This Satvara person is claiming a time 55 minutes faster than Ball of Snow's 216. Now, of course, there was no video to go along with this claim, so forum users were perhaps a bit skeptical. After all, Satvara was new to the forums and had no credibility. God Mode God welcomed Satvara to the forum, and upon seeing his supposed time of 121, his reaction was. Not bad, not really knowing what to say to such a suspicious claim. On the internet, anybody can technically claim whatever they want. At this point, speedrunners are all too familiar with various YouTube comments of people claiming outlandish times. It was hard to tell whether Satvara was legit, or just some random troll looking to cause a stir. Satvara also said in his initial post that his run was missing a couple of strategies he didn't know about. God Mode God and another user, Mystery Man, then started guessing time estimates of how low the time could go had he used those strategies he said he was missing. Now, keep in mind, these two users didn't even know what strategies would have taken place for a 121, let alone even lower than that. This, of course, annoyed Satvara, and tensions would begin to rise on the forum. Allow me to reenact Satvara's response to these posts in dramatic fashion. <coughs> I think it's time I laid my cards out on the table. I can't help but laugh at the fact that you guys are making time estimates based on a time you know nothing about. A 121 is impossible, and both of you have really no idea how impossible it is. You could try and try, but you would never come close. At least, with what you know. God Mode God would respond. Should have just done what I intended in my last post, which is to mention how perfectly Ball of Snow did God Mode. It doesn't matter how good you are, you aren't doing much better even on Hero. I try not to immediately shoot down newcomers anymore, as I often would if they made such claims. I even let you buy without asking for proof and the like, which is unlike me. You got lucky. Is it? You really should have, because your not bad comment almost made me think you were an idiot. I seriously contemplating never coming back here, and perhaps going somewhere else. But I think I'll be sticking around now, and get that SDA run out of your head. You won't be needing it anymore. We'll see soon enough. Don't forget, however, that I'm here to give back, and it's only because I admire what you're trying to build here. If you so will it, we'll move forward together. If not, so be it. Enough talk. The discussion would continue like this into the night, and by now, other users of the forum were also beginning to believe that Sadvara's claim was fraudulent. What was with all the talk? Where was the proof? I mean, surely. This was all just one big bluff. Right? After a few days of silence from Satvara, he would return back to the forum, delivering the goods. The videos to his run were posted, slowly but surely, part by part. This is when everyone started to realize the genius that is Satvara. Not only was his claim of 121 legit, the glitches and strategies used to get the time were all discovered independently. No prior reference such as the runs from Prism or Ball of Snow was ever used. Satvara, in 2007, had virtually cracked God of War open, all in complete isolation.
The run was absolutely astounding. Satvara had completely flipped the game on its head, all by himself, and several forum users went from skeptical to extremely impressed very quickly. But what was it that Satvara was doing over runners prior that put his time in a league of his own? Let's take a deeper look at Satvara's 121 to see where he managed to save so much time. Most runners in the early days of God of War speedrunning insisted on playing on God Mode, since it was viewed as the most skillful way to play through the game. But difficulty practically didn't matter after Satvara's run, as he found one of, if not, the most impactful glitch in the entire game. The Infinite Regenerating Magic Glitch. Not too long after you arrive in Athens, you have to engage in a tutorial fight against a Medusa. Upon defeating it, you acquire Medusa's Gaze, a magic spell you can cast to stone enemies. The game wants you to try the spell out on some Minotaur enemies, but for the purpose of the tutorial, you are granted infinitely regenerating magic to try the spell out as much as you'd like. Instead of defeating the enemies, Satvara makes his way to a spot where he can clip out of bounds, and after some crafty seam walking and tricky jumps, Satvara escapes the tutorial room. The game still assumes Kratos to be in the tutorial fight, and thus, you now have infinitely regenerating magic for the rest of the game. It didn't matter much whether Satvara was on hero or god mode, otherwise difficult fights became trivial. Magic took care of everything. There was also no need to gather Phoenix Feathers to increase your magic meter, something that both Prism and Ball of Snow had to do all over the game. This is by far one of the most groundbreaking glitches in the history of the game, saving time virtually everywhere in the run. Sadvara had discovered two big movement techniques that he used throughout his run to reach higher and further places. A standard high jump was already a known discovery in 2006, but Sadvara had found an improved version using Poseidon's Rage in the Air to reach higher places in multiple spots. One of the places where this saved the most amount of time was in Cliffs of Madness. Normally, you need to acquire two necklaces to extend a bridge fully to make it across. Satvara, however, only got one necklace to extend the bridge to its midway point. He then used a Poseidon's Rage high jump to make it to the upper area, jumped across, and used another Poseidon's Rage high jump to make it to the other side, skipping the second necklace and saving over 8 minutes in total. The other movement technique Satvara had discovered was a way to extend Kratos' jump to gain further distance by swinging the Blades of Chaos in mid-air. At Athens Town Square, Satvara used this technique to reach the bridge in the middle of the plaza early. This jump might not look like much, until you realize that this entirely skips the level rooftops of Athens, and it also skips the collection of the magic Zeus's Fury, saving over 11 minutes. The same long jump technique was used in Challenge of Atlas to skip an underground section where you have to fight a bunch of enemies on a rope. Satvara simply did a long jump from a certain height of the rope that descended into the cave, and collected the Shield of Hades early. This saved almost two minutes. The forced fight thereafter was quickly taken care of with Infinite Magic, Poseidon's Rage Level 2, and Blade Combos. In order to proceed further into Challenge of Atlas, a second shield is needed for further progression and Satvara had found a big shortcut for this one too. A Poseidon's Rage high jump was sufficient in reaching the ledge where the second shield is located, saving another minute and a half over the game's intended path. Right after obtaining the infinite magic, you are required to climb a set of walls infested with enemies until you reach a statue you need to push over. Satvara was able to skip the walls entirely with some crafty double jumps to reach the statue before intended. A quick 20 second save. When you first set foot in Challenge of Hades, you have to fight a bunch of centaurs to open a door to a maze. You then enter the maze, where you're required to defeat all of the enemies to open the final door to progress. This is effectively what Prism did in his run, but the previously mentioned sequence break that Ball of Snow had used was a way of clipping through the top of the maze due to some dodgy collision, saving over 6 minutes on Prism. Satvara, however, had found an even better way all on his own, that skipped both fighting the centaurs and entering the maze. A standard high jump was enough to ledge grab the platform where the button at the end of the maze was located. Easy money for an additional 3 minutes. To top it all off, Sadvara managed to skip a ton of forced fights by finding clever ways of getting around the fight triggers. The introductory fight against the satyrs in Cliffs of Madness was skipped with a Poseidon's Rage high jump. Also in Cliffs of Madness, a fight inside of a cave was bypassed 
with a long jump. The infamous conveyor belt fight against the Harpies in the Architect's Tomb was skipped by hugging the corner of the room and avoiding the fight trigger. This skip was actually already found by someone else in 2006, but Sadvara had also found it by himself. Finally, a big clash against some Cyclops and Minotaurs in the Ruined Temple of the Oracle was avoided by just barely jumping over the fight trigger. All of these aforementioned fights would otherwise take a minute or two each, so Sadvara gained some hefty time throughout the run from avoiding them. As Sadvara rolled his way through Mount Olympus, he had finished his segmented run. The time at the final save point was truthful to his original post. 121.41, done in August 2007. If there was any doubts as to whether or not Sadvara's run was actually done in isolation, there are a very few select instances where Ball of Snow's run actually has superior strategies. Strategies Sadvara could have utilized had he chosen to look up the run. The two notable points where Sadvara's run is worse is in the Aegean Sea when fighting the Hydra, and using Rage of the Gods against a group of archers in Cliffs of Madness when Army of Hades was the better choice. Despite these tiny flaws, the run completely shattered expectations. People on the Ultimate God of War Union forum were floored as to how Satvara was able to dismantle the game in so many different ways, all on his own. God Mode God still did not approve of Satvara's behavior coming into the forum, but decided to give credit where credit is due. His run was a marvel. Satvara's reasoning behind showing the run to the Ultimate God of War Union rather than Speed Demo's archive was a matter of acceptance. Satvara notably did not submit his run to SDA for a couple of reasons. SDA did not allow out-of-bounds glitches back in 2007, and while Kratos technically never leaves the intended game area in his 121, Satvara envisioned a long and drawn-out discussion about what was and wasn't out-of-bounds. Satvara sensed that the moderation team over at SDA simply did not know God of War to the extent he did, so he didn't bother submitting. The infinite regenerating magic glitch was also seen as an exploit so huge a separate category was in the discussion on the forums if a submission was to happen. Satvara felt that SDA's rule set was hindering the game from its potential. He felt that glitches and sequence breaks were both valid in beating the game as quickly as possible. A foreshadowing to the way we view speedrunning today, with glitches being one of the main draws for the culture as a whole. The Ultimate God of War Union seemed more in line with this way of thinking, which is why he chose to reveal his run over there. Overall though, Satvara was happy enough with the result of 121, and eventually shifted his focus more towards glitching and sequence breaking following the completion of his run. Satvara was not done just yet. In late 2007 and 2008, Satvara went on what I can only describe as a killing spree when it came to God of War glitches. After his groundbreaking performance, Sethvara still felt that the game had more room for breakthroughs. I apologize for the upcoming 2008 video quality, but it wouldn't be an authentic speedrun documentary without it, if you ask me. One of his first major discoveries was a way to skip the desert sirens in the Desert of Lost Souls. Athena demands that you hunt down the three sirens that are roaming the desert in order to proceed through a small ruined temple. Satvara had figured out a way to get into the temple early by using the move Hermes Rush in the air to clip through some collision on a wall, completely skipping killing the desert sirens, saving around two minutes. Satvara's Gates of Athens skip was now further extended with a crazy looking out of bounds to save even more time. More minutes were gained here due to skipping knocking over the statue and the handful of fights that followed straight afterwards. When you first reach Pandora's Temple, you must speak with a gatekeeper that can open the entrance for Kratos. You then fight some big Cyclops enemies and proceed into the temple. Satvara was able to discover a way to skip both of these requirements by using a grounded Hermes Rush to wedge himself between a chest and a wall. He then double jumped behind the gate to reach the stairs early, saving nearly three minutes. This one seems to have garnered some attention within the mighty YouTube algorithm. Not bad for an old skip from 2008. One of Satvara's biggest contributions to the game around this time was a huge sequence break discovered in the very first level, the Aegean Sea. 
In a casual playthrough, after you climb the ship's mast, you're intended to make your way over to a second ship by sliding along a rope. On this other ship is where you obtain Poseidon's Rage, fight the big Hydra, and get a key for your troubles. You're meant to use this key on a door to reach the end of the level, but Satvara had found a pretty ridiculous jump to skip the large detour. Watch and observe. A massive leap from the ship's mast down to a very thin ledge below. If you're just too far left, you fall and die. And if you're just too far right, you'll clip back and bounce. Precision is the name of the game. Sadvara then jumps along the out of bounds seam and jumps over the locked door. While this skip does save over 4 minutes, it wasn't utilized in speedruns for the sole reason that Poseidon's Rage was a necessary component in making skips later in the game possible. But I did mention this one for a reason. More on it later. After breaking Poseidon's trident free from its crystallized cage, Kratos must traverse a section underwater. An out of bounds through a small roof was discovered at some point in 2006, but the potential wasn't fully realized until Satvara gave it another look in February 2008. In a three minute long YouTube video, Satvara completed the entirety of this underwater section from out of bounds by figuring out where all the loading triggers are located. This discovery must have been both difficult and annoying to solve, mainly due to you having to keep Kratos out of bounds the whole time while constantly fighting the uncooperative camera. All in all, a bit over a minute and a half was gained here. In the Temple of the Oracle, Kratos must save the Oracle from falling off a rope she's desperately clinging onto for dear life. In brutal God of War fashion, we can leave her hanging, by clipping through the door to the next section. Satvara once again used the aerial Hermes Rush move in a very specific spot to get through to the other side, skipping the act of saving the Oracle and the two-minute cutscene that follows. Valuable time save, but extremely difficult to pull off. The two shields that Satvara had to acquire in his run to open a door in Challenge of Atlas could now be skipped, and saved a huge amount of time. It was figured out that the Blade of Artemis could be used as a form of high jump, which proved useful in many spots. Satvara jumps onto a chest and holds Triangle to perform an ascension. He then swings the Blade of Artemis and uses Poseidon's Rage in combination for more height. He's able to clip out of bounds and jump around the door that requires the two shields, saving nearly five minutes over his old run. As if that wasn't enough, Satvara found a better version of this skip a few months later that skipped to the very final door in Challenge of Atlas. Inside the infamous Spike Corridor in Pandora's Temple, you can clip out of bounds by hanging onto the side of one of the crushers. This requires a well-timed Poseidon's Rage high jump so that Kratos is able to grab the ledge of the crusher when it's visible. After clipping out of bounds, you have to navigate Kratos blindly on a thin stretch of floor, constantly in danger of falling down or accidentally clipping back in bounds. This is followed by another Poseidon's Rage high jump right through the floor of the exit tunnel of Challenge of Atlas. This way, you can go through Challenge of Atlas backwards to acquire the Architect's Son's head without doing anything else in the level. When Kratos finally reaches Pandora's box, a one minute cutscene plays that informs him that he must bring the box back to Athens. Of course, Satvara found a way around this too. He simply went out of bounds using the Blade of Artemis and Poseidon's Rage in the room before the box, Seam walked on the outside of the room, and free fell all the way down the shaft you're supposed to take the box through. After hitting the loading trigger at the bottom of the shaft, the game gives you Pandora's box despite never watching the cutscene. It seems that nothing was impossible for Satvara. I feel like I would be doing Satvara dirty if I didn't mention his God of War playthrough that skipped collecting all magics and the Blade of Artemis in late 2008. Some of the skips used for this playthrough I've already gone over, such as the Hydra 3 skip to bypass Poseidon's Rage, and a similar but improved out of bounds in the Medusa room to skip Medusa's gaze. A puzzle later in Athens requires you to freeze a Minotaur onto a button with Medusa's gaze, so Satvara had to find a way around this room to complete the playthrough. It's hard to tell from the video quality, but Satvara did manage to find a skip, by jumping over a pile of rubble outside of the puzzle room with the assistance of the attack Apollo's offensive, for more length to clear the wall. 
Zeus's Fury was skipped straight afterwards with the classic long jump we saw from earlier. The Blade of Artemis was skipped with an obscure trick known as gliding, performed by using Hermes Rush into the wall and blocking to gain some rather strange momentum to effectively glide around the trigger that gives you the blade. Finally, Army of Hades was skipped with an out-of-bounds in the Pandora's Guardian Room, followed by some seam walking to get around the trigger for the magic. The end of the video shows Kratos in Olympus with no magics or subweapons collected. A huge flex, yet seemingly another day in the office for Satvara. One final discovery I'll talk about for now is one I cannot believe was found in 2008. The difficulty on this skip is above anything I've mentioned prior. This is the Sacrifice Room, a room that saw some controversy when the game came out. Kratos must bring a caged soldier to the room, then burn and sacrifice him to proceed. A skip for this room didn't really seem feasible, but as we know by now, nothing stands in the way of Satvara. He uses the Blade of Artemis and Poseidon's Rage the first get out of bounds to stand on a tiny seam outside of the level. More Blade of Artemis high jumps are used to land further along the level. And then finally, one long string of high jumps to get under the sacrifice door, where Sedvara barely makes it with his last jump before running out of magic. A few years later in 2012, a new way of high jumping without Poseidon's Rage was discovered, now using Medusa's Gaze. This finally makes Sedvara's old Hydra skip from years prior viable in single segment speedruns. With Poseidon's Rage completely out of the route, this would increase the difficulty of a few of the known sequence breaks, most notably, Sacrifice Skip, a skip no one dared to use in single segment runs until 2020, a whole 12 years after Sadvara first discovered it. I mostly went over Sadvara's bigger discoveries in this video, but honestly, I'm kind of scraping the tip of the iceberg. If I truly went over everything, we'd be here for hours. Viewers on YouTube saw Satvara's videos as a spectacle. His glitch videos inspired other players to try their hand at breaking God of War, and many great findings would take place in 2008 and 2009, not just from Satvara. Entering 2009, however, Satvara's video uploads would become few and far between. In March 2009, he uploaded a video demonstrating a way to cancel the Hydra's energy regeneration with extremely precise grabs, something that other players could not seem to get the hang of at the time due to its difficulty. The description of the video suddenly announced that this would be his last God of War video. In the comments, Sethvara said that he was done and didn't want anything to do with the game anymore. Many community members at the time, such as Akion, Turyu, and God Mode God, were all sad to see Sethvara go. He had done so much for the game, and his videos were nothing short of inspirational. As a result, the initial golden age of God of War sequence breaking would slowly fade out. Activity dwindled, and the game would have to wait for the second coming. Throughout the PS3's lifespan, the God of War games would see a handful of re-releases on the console updating the graphics to HD, and also porting over some of the PSP games that not everybody got to play. One would think this would reinvigorate some activity amongst the speedrun community, especially with a God of War 1 trophy that challenges you to beat the game in under 5 hours. There were a couple of segmented runs in 2011 and 2012 that were in the works from two new runners, but both of these never made it past the halfway point in the game. Someone just needed to pick up the pieces to re-spark the activity in the scene. In August 2012, the God of War Saga Collection was released, which featured God of War 1, 2, 3, Chains of Olympus, and Ghost of Sparta. A pretty ambitious release, and a certain someone would get reeled back into playing the series. After seeing how deserted the God of War speedrunning scene had become, this certain someone felt the need to revive the activity. Despite claiming that he didn't want anything to do with the game, God of War 1 still had so much left to uncover. When the game was at its most stagnant, Satvara returned to God of War. Oh yeah, Satvara was back, baby. Back with another collection of incredible skips and glitches. 
After already breaking the AGNC with his multiple minute saving Hydra 3 skip, he had found two more to further shorten the level. The first one was a way to skip Hydra 2. In a casual setting, defeating all the harpies on the boat is required for the Hydra to pop through the wooden planks. Those same harpies could now be used for a skip to bypass the fight entirely. If you stand on this chest, then wait until a harpy swoops down towards you, you can block its attack in midair, and it'll get stuck on the other side of the fence on the floor above you. With a precise grab, you can get Kratos onto the other side. This is still a very inconsistent skip even today, with your only form of aid being a very strict window of an audio cue of the harpy screaming as it's swooping towards you. This also segues perfectly into Sadvara's next discovery. After some balancing beams and watching a cutscene, Kratos must push a box to take cover from an incoming volley of arrows. Sadvara had found a way around this too. Instead of pushing the box, it was possible to reach the ledge early with a standard high jump. Comparing a skip like this to some of Sadvara's earlier findings, it's easy to assume that this skip was, perhaps, a bit overlooked, and should have been found earlier. The ledge, however, is only reachable on the PS3 version of the game. Maybe a slight porting error made Kratos' jump a tiny bit higher, allowing him to grab the ledge and save 20-odd seconds or so. This was cool and all, but Sadvara still had more up his sleeve. Sadvara's next discovery was quite huge, and is one that is still seeing use today. The strategy takes place in the Pandora's Guardian fight, in Challenge of Hades. Casually, you have to rinse and repeat a process of stunning the boss, then hurling logs at it to remove its armor bit by bit. Sadvara had completely torn the fight to shreds. Here's how he did it. He first goes up to the crank that hurls the logs and pulls it. The first log will always miss, but what he uncovered was... If you pull the crank again at a very precise time in the cutscene, you can in fact hit the boss without doing the necessary stun locks. He does this a total of three times to remove all of the boss's armor, skipping ahead to the second phase in an instant. Pandora's Guardian is still wearing its chest piece, but this is merely a visual bug. Even ten years later, this is still the fastest way of doing the fight. A small skip that saved around 15 seconds from skipping the fight in the Pandora's Temple lobby was discovered by Sadvara as well around this time. This skip nearly rivals the aforementioned sacrifice skip in terms of difficulty. The skip involves ledge grabbing a sword on the upper part of the door with a precise Poseidon's Rage high jump, then making your way around the lobby from above with whatever movement techniques you have available to you. The Blade of Artemis is not yet obtained by this point in the game, so Satvara opts to use Apollo's Offensive for further distance. This technique is commonly called Apollo's Long Jump. Not an easy skip by any means, yet another discovery that, I feel, was ahead of its time. Satvara's ability to find new sequence breaks made it seem like he was a machine, spitting them out one by one. But you have to remember that, at the end of the day, Satvara is a human being, just like the rest of us. And an unfortunate event would strike a family member of his at the very end of 2012. Satvara's mother had suffered an unexpected life-altering stroke. Satvara slowly but surely lost interest in God of War as a result, and focused more on what was actually important helping his mother recover. He never intended to leave the game so unexpectedly, but it's understandable that his motivation was simply not there anymore. Before disappearing from the scene, however, Satvara did drop one final bomb of a discovery, a finding that would fundamentally change the entire early game of God of War. This is the Port of Athens swimming glitch. In God of War, Kratos can swim on water surfaces from the beginning of the game. But diving underwater is only possible after you grab Poseidon's trident, roughly halfway through the game. Both Satvara and Achaeon had experimented with skipping large sections of the game using what's known as the swimming glitch. In some cases, if you can manage to get Kratos pushed beneath the water surface using certain collision, entering free diving mode is possible before grabbing the trident. This was known to be possible in Challenge of Atlas, Challenge of Hades, and Cliffs of Madness, but weren't useful or faster by any means. However, on January 1st, 2013, Satvara would once again revolutionize the speedrunning route by finding a swimming glitch in the Port of Athens that saved... well, a fuckton. Let's just put it that way. 
Upon reaching Athens for the first time, there's a short cutscene followed by the game creating a new checkpoint. If you're fast enough, you can grab the ledge next to the ladder leading back down into the ship's cabin as you become checkpointed. If you retry from the last checkpoint, the game lets Kratos freefall during the loading time. Since Kratos cannot activate any triggers while the game is loading, he will fall down past the loading zone all the way down to the ocean floor instead of ending up back inside the ship. Sadvara is freely able to move around as if he was on solid ground, and makes his way out of bounds to a small bridge where he can get pushed downwards to activate the free diving mode. By going through the ladder at the ship, Kratos is able to elegantly swim through the air freely, to go wherever he pleases. From here on out, you can just touch the necessary loading triggers to advance the game to the next part. Port of Athens, Gates of Athens, Athens Town Square, and the Temple of the Oracle were all skipped by swimming past them. The swimming glitch can only be cancelled under certain conditions, most commonly being to touch a pool of water somewhere else in the game, which the sewers before the Desert of Lost Souls conveniently have. The Port of Athens swimming glitch is still one of the most major discoveries in the game, and is a testament to Satvara's ability to think outside of the box, even after all these years. 2013 was the last time we saw any new discoveries in God of War from Satvara. While God of War 1 is certainly Satvara's greatest body of work when it comes to sequence breaking, he has also found plenty of notable discoveries in Prince of Persia The Sands of Time, Castlevania Lords of Shadow, another Metroid 2 remake, and Fast RMX, just to name a few. I spoke with Satvara while researching for this video, and he wanted me to be very clear about something. His 121 run from August 2007 was, as his YouTube description says, an experiment. He wanted to see what strategies he could discover in complete isolation, and he wanted to see what time he was able to achieve with the limited knowledge of his own discoveries. It just so happens that the knowledge he possessed was greater than any other player. In his own words, When I was doing the run in isolation, I didn't necessarily think I was breaking new ground, even with regen magic or the rooftop skip. I thought there could have already been something way under an hour or something, like how the game would look in 2008. That was a distinct possibility all throughout the run. I would think God of War is a popular game selling millions of copies. Surely, there's a real speedrun community out there. And yeah, despite a logical train of thought, one of the only speedrun communities out there for God of War was the Ultimate God of War Union Forum. Satvara's entrance was definitely explosive, but he felt it was necessary to hype up the run a little bit. I mean, after all, the forum users had no idea what was coming. I asked Satvara if there was still tension between himself and God Mode God after all these years. It seems to me that Satvara admires God Mode God's dedication as a leader to the God of War community and holds no grudges against the man, but does not speak to him as the two don't share much in common outside of the game, and they're both fairly inactive. Satvara also thinks God Mode God is a troll, so there's that. Satvara did suggest that I reach out to God Mode God to get his side of the story and to see if he felt the same way. I messaged him on game FAQs and was greeted with some pretty lengthy messages detailing his thoughts on the whole situation back then. From what I gathered, God Mode God does not discredit the work Satvara put into God of War 1, but on a more personal level, he claims there's no bad blood, as he quote, doubt Satvara ever really cared. But God Mode God still seems to hold a grudge, and says that Satvara should not be let off the hook just because time has passed. His entry into the forum was rude, and he has no respect for Satvara. And that's where that stands as of now. If you wish to learn more about the history of God of War speedrunning and Satvara, Akion has a two-part speedrun history series on YouTube that has a painfully low amount of views, so please go show the videos some love. Multiple segments in this video were inspired thanks to his amazing coverage. Akion is also a glitch hunter and runner who I really want to shed a bit of light on as well. He has broken so many different games it's not even funny, but just like Satvara, his greatest body of work is God of War 1. He has even written a glitch FAQ for the game that's currently over 103 pages. If Satvara didn't exist, the runner-up for most influential God of War 1 glitch hunter is without a doubt this guy. Akion and Satvara were the glitch-hunting dynamic duo back in the early days. Together, they collaborated and bounced ideas between each other to discover new strategies and techniques, usually through the YouTube comment section. Akion was also invaluable in helping me learn the speedrun for God of War 1 in 2017, and provided additional help in the research for this video. 
Thank you for that. All this coverage would also not have been possible without the man himself. It's truly an honor to be able to cover such a rich story like his on my channel. When I asked Sadvara what skips he's the most proud of, he had this to say. There are no particular skips that I'm more proud of over others, as each was found by engaging in and trusting the process. I learned to take whatever the game gave back to me, whether I liked it or not. Sequence breaking doesn't actually break the game. It merely uncovers the truth of what was always there. Looking back as an individual player, I think I could have done better. Still, what's most important is that I learned a great deal about speedrunning and sequence breaking through God of War, as well as from my interactions with the community, especially Akion, who is one of the most skilled glitchers I've had the privilege of working with. In the end, all I can do is contribute what I can, when I can, and hope I inspire others to do even better. Satvara set a standard for what was possible in the world of glitching and sequence breaking, but he believes better is always possible. All it takes is the right player with the right mindset to elevate the game to the next level. But as it stands right now, Satvara's work in God of War 1 is definitely the most prolific. The magnitude of his impact extends all the way up until our modern year of 2022. If we closely analyze the current single segment world record by Traj, one can find that 25 out of a total 41 skips were initially found and weaponized by Satvara. You can safely say that 60% of the run is directly influenced by a single individual, who all found the skips 10 or more years ago. 60% is already crazy enough, but had Satvara kept playing, who knows where that statistic would lie. A game that took almost three hours to complete in a speedy setting is now down to a third of that, and who knows how much further it could be pushed with its seemingly infinite potential. Satvara really exploited this game through and through, at a time when breaking games to this level of advancement was not very present online. His goal all along was to fundamentally change the way speedrunners ran and how sequence breakers broke, and I hope this video will spread awareness to that exact goal. He was a man dead set on playing outside of the parameters of the game, all to showcase the beauty that is God of War. It just so happens that in the process, he broke the game in half. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please consider subscribing and supporting me on Patreon. Take care, and have a good one.